Once upon a time, in the 5th century BCE, there was a powerful city called Vey. It was located in central Etruria, not far from Rome. Vey was a rich and prosperous republic with strong walls protecting it. It stood as a formidable obstacle to Roman expansion, blocking their path to the north. Both Vey and Rome claimed the town of Fideni, which was strategically located on the south bank of the Tiber River. Tensions rose between Vey and Rome, and a truce was broken when Vey seized Fideni. Rome saw Vey as a major threat to their growing power and desired its fertile lands for farming. In preparation for war, Rome implemented governmental reforms. They captured Fideni, while the people of Vey worked tirelessly to fortify their city against an anticipated Roman attack. They cut back cliffs to make them steeper and built earthen ramparts with stone defenses around the city. In 404 BCE, the war between Vey and Rome began in earnest. They sought assistance from the Etruscan Confederation, but their pleas fell on deaf ears as the blame for the renewed fighting was placed on Vey. This war marked several firsts for Rome. It was their first conflict beyond the territories of the original Latin people. It was also the first time that Roman soldiers campaigned throughout the year without interruptions for the harvest. Additionally, it was the first occasion when Roman soldiers received regular pay. The outcome of this war was crucial for Rome's survival. The Romans laid siege to Bay, and the battle lasted for eight long years, from 404 to 396 BCE. During the siege, Bay launched a daring nighttime attack, destroying months of Roman siege works. However, this only fueled the determination of the Romans to conquer the city. Over time, the Romans managed to gain control of the only level access point to Bay, a narrow strip of land. This strip contained an important irrigation tunnel that passed beneath the city walls and opened into Vey itself. Marcus Furius Camillus, who was appointed dictator of Rome and directed the later stages of the operation, ordered a large number of sappers to work tirelessly, enlarging the tunnel. Camillus was so confident of victory that he asked the Senate to decide how to divide the spoils of war. The Senate decided to allow the troops to take what they could. In 396 BCE, the final assault on Vey took place. While the majority of Roman forces launched a loud and fierce attack on the city walls, Camillus sent a group of elite soldiers through the tunnel into the heart of Vey. This smaller force successfully opened the gates and allowed the Roman army to enter the city. Only when Vey was fully under Roman control did Camillus order the protection of the defenseless and the pillaging to begin. After sacking the city, the Romans partially destroyed it, demolishing its defenses and forcing many of the inhabitants to leave. The elimination of Vey as an independent city-state was a significant departure and set a worrying precedent. It showed the importance of the conflict and marked the first time Rome had eradicated another city-state. The Romans also claimed the deity of Juno, a symbol of vitality and youth, which had been revered in Vey. The siege of Vey was a critical event in Roman history. It marked the first expansion of Roman territory beyond the lands originally occupied by the Latin people. It demonstrated Rome's growing power and ambition, setting the stage for their future conquests and the establishment of a mighty empire.